All right, so let's take a look at this unique example here. Let's just take a look step by step. The first part that we look at is the question sentence as always, and it reads, what was the original size? Okay, sounds good. We want the original size. Sweet. So everybody, can we confirm that in the chat box? It says, what was the original size? So we want to say, you know, original size equals blank. Can we confirm that? That's what we want. The units here are megabytes, so MB. Can we confirm that before we get started here? That what we are looking for is the original size. We notice how I'm being specific there, right? I repeated myself five, six, seven times on the same exact detail, but it's important to understand your grounding. So we have that. And now the next thing I'm gonna look at is the information I'm given. And if you take the moment on this next step to identify your information properly, you're gonna see why the wrong answer is C. I'll show you right now. Here we go. It says after a 30% reduction, okay, let me write that down. 30% reduction, okay. It says a file shrank to 56 megabytes. Okay, so the result equals 56 megabytes. Okay, so this is gonna be, everybody, you tell me, you tell me that 56 megabytes is the final size. Is that right, everybody? It's not the, it's not the, the amount that we've reduced by, that's the final size, right? Yeah, it is. It says again, after the reduction, it shrank to 56 megabytes. So right there, this file is 56 megabytes. That's the final size. Why do I keep repeating these details, huh? Why do I keep doing that? Well, let's write our formula out. The percent times the original equals the result. Let me show you why this is so important knowing that the percent and the result represent the same thing. Look at what's wrong with this. If I blindly plug in 30% times the original equals the resultant's 56 megabytes, look at what's wrong with this, everybody. It's wrong because the 30% represents how much we were reducing by. This is the reduction. Again, we reduced by 30%. And when you look at the 56, everybody, does the 56 represent what we reduced by or what we got to, what we, what we reduced to? Yeah, this is what we reduced by. This is the final. This is what we get after we reduce. So everybody, let me ask you this. In this problem, in this setup, is the percent and is the result are they representative of the same thing? Are they representing the same thing as we currently see it on the screen? Yeah, the answer there is going to be a no. The answer is going to be no because the percent represents reduction. The, the result represents the final. This doesn't make sense. And so to make it make sense, there's one little thing that you have to do. Shout out to my folks in the chat box already putting in the work right on. One thing that we can do super easy here is again, just make sure that these line up because I'm already given the final amount. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to leave that as the final amount. I'm going to want to get the final percent. I'm going to want to get the final percent here. Let me show you how to do that. If the original size is 100%. If that's the original, well, guess what? Everybody, what does reduction mean? What does reduction mean? To reduce, what does that mean? Yeah, to subtract. So let's subtract 30% because again, that's the reduction. And when I do that subtraction, when I commit to it, I get a result of 70%. So the result is... 70% of the original size, right there. This represents the final. The final is 70% of that original amount. 
And so what I'll do is this right here. Get rid of the reduction, the 30%. I'll put in the 70% right there. And now I'm good to go. Because I'm going to write this as a decimal, 0 0.7. You can write 0 0.70 if you want to, but I don't like giving myself too much work. I'll just go ahead and put 0 0.7 times X. So I'll just say times the original just to keep it easier. And now all I got to do is divide both sides by 0 0.7. And look at what I got. Booyah right there. There we are. Don't think that the answer is going to be eight. Be very careful. We're going to cancel out right there on the left side. And our original value. Our original value right here. We can just go ahead and use our little decimal rule right away by moving it to the right once. And then right to the one, you know, right once over here too. So what we now have is 560 divided by seven. 560 divided by seven, that's gonna be eight with a zero at the end, which is going to be 80. So the original file size is 80 megabytes. That is the original file size right there, B, 80 megabytes. If you would have kept the 30%, you may have gotten the 168 megabytes. That's what you would have gotten. But we have to remember, that the formula matters so much. You have to consider consistency and representing everything the right way. If we do that, then we'll be in a great position every time we step to the plate. So here we go, next question. So the goal and the purpose of this question is to figure out what the ratio of flour to butter is. Okay, that's all we wanna know. Again, we're gonna write that down immediately we want to know the ratio of flour to butter. The reason that this is actually a problem is because when we take a look at the statements here, we're gonna see that this baking recipe, it calls for a ratio of flour to sugar, not flour to butter. And then in the same recipe, it gives the ratio of sugar to butter. Again, there's the butter, but not the flour. Here's the flour but not the butter. So we have a little bit of an issue. So because of that, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead now and write those ratios out. We have flour to sugar being three to four. And then we have the recipe of sugar to butter. That's going to be four to seven. So when we have this and we take a quick little peek, everybody, what do we notice is the same between these two ratios? What do we notice is the same between those two ratios? Sugar. We see that sugar is being compared by both ratios and we see that the value for sugar, what do we notice? Are the values for sugar the same? Are the values for sugar the same? Absolutely, yes they are. And because they're the same, we can actually just do a direct comparison. We can just overlap that nice and easy because guess what? Because it's nice and compared to the same sugar value, flour and butter can be compared together nice and easy. So we have flour over here at three, butter over here at seven. We wanted flour first anyway, so the correct answer is three, to seven and that's what's going to give us here answer choice b all right and there we go